Hi there. My name is Tim Cornish. I'm reporting from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. It's November 2014, and this is an English as a Second Language lesson in listening, speaking, and pronunciation practice. So, please listen in. Today's lesson, the Peace Pipe Ceremony. It was almost sundown on the prairies, and the native North American tribe had settled down into camp. Flames danced high into the night as the braves and warriors took their places in a circle around the campfire. At the head of the circle sat the native chief, and beside him sat guests of the tribe. From around his neck the chief removed a long band of braided leather, which was tied on both ends to a long pipe. Crushing a pinch of tobacco into the bowl of the pipe, the chief said, let us welcome our guests. The passing of the peace pipe will begin. To many tribes of native North Americans, the passing of a peace pipe was an important custom that was handed down through the centuries. Smoking tobacco played a large role in many of the native religious, social, and ceremonial activities. Sharing a peace pipe was also a symbol of goodwill when the pipe was passed around to guests of the tribe. Many friendships were sealed and treaties arranged over puffs of smoke from peace pipes. Native pipes were usually crafted by individual warriors and artists in the tribe. The pipes came in many different shapes, sizes, and lengths. They could be flat or tubular and were often made of wood or clay. Many pipes were decorated with brilliantly colored paints, feathers, beads, horsehairs, leather, or carvings. Decorations on the bowl and stem of the pipe often reflected tribal myths and legends. Even the method of holding and passing the pipe was very symbolic to the tribe's people. The chief was usually the first person to smoke from the pipe. After he had drawn in a large breath of smoke, the pipe would be passed around the circle by the chief. During treaty ceremonies, the pipe was never placed on the ground. It went directly from one person to another, usually before speeches were made or any business conducted. For guests of the tribe to puff from the peace pipe meant the smoker was giving his pledge of honor to the tribe and thanking the natives for inviting him to the ceremony. It was also believed that smoke from the pipe increased wisdom and made smokers think more clearly. The manner of exhaling the smoke held different meanings to different tribes. Puffs of smoke were often blown to the four corners of the world, the sky above and the earth below. The Ojibwa tribes of the Great Lakes regions offered smoke from their pipes to the great sky spirit. The Assiniboine sent smoke to the gods known as sun, thunder, and earth. Native tribes on the plains could often be found smoking from effigy pipes. These pipes were used in special ceremonies and were usually decorated with carvings of buffalo, wolves, birds, or humans. Today, the dangers of excessive tobacco smoking to physical health are well known. In fact, smoking is actually banned in many public areas, but the smoking of the peace pipe remains a lasting symbol of the history and diverse culture of Canada's First Nation people.